Head over to jointhefoot.com and become a part of our official Foot Clan community. Get access to premium stats, premium tools and resources, stuff like the Stream Finder tool, and access to bonus episodes of the show like the Footcast and the brand new Injury Blitz. You can check all of it out at jointhefoot.com. This is Melvin Gore, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Another day. Another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Andy, Mike, and Jason. Jam-packed show. We have tons of matchups to get into. You got jammed. <laughs> uh, but I'm excited. Give me your quick reactions to what you saw last night. Oh, all right. Quick reaction to the Thursday night game. We had the Miami Dolphins taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. 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 It's pronounced Jaguars. Jaguars. If you if you bougie, yeah. is the Jacksonville Jaguars, yeah. which I've heard Jacksonville is a bougie, the town. bougie capital of yeah the United States. That's what that mustache reminds me of. <laughs> bougie. Uh, I will say Gardner Minshew. Wishes did Gardner bench you? He, he would Gardner bench Minch you. You yeah, there. That's where you need to go. He w- really wishes that DJ Chark was on the field. It, it, I'm, I will not excuse the play of Minshew. He didn't necessarily look great. He missed Conley on an easy deep shot uh, that would have been a what, like a forty yard score or something and changed everything. Changed the, the fantasy outlook and the outlook of the game. But before that, Chris Conley was doing his best to sabotage mm-hmm. Gardner Minshew at the beginning of the game. Just I mean, he single handedly killed two drives. Which isn't he, that on Gardner for uh, choosing to heavily target Chris Conley? It's tough when who was he you, supposed to throw to? Ke- well, he, Keelan, Keelan Cole, Cole Tyler Eifert. To. Yeah, no, he 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 played poorly. But outside of the Minshew uh, letdown. The game was fantastic. It was it was pretty fun. Full of Fitz magic. Uh, your start of the week. James Never retire. Robinson. Never retire. Fitz magic. James Robinson had a had a great game. Mike Kosicki had a great game. It was it was a lot of fun. And most fantasy options outside of Minshew really came through. Well, we've seen this twice now. If a start of the week loses their number one wide receiver moments before the game, yeah, you should steer be. clear. Matthew <laughs> Stafford lost Galladay in week one. Minshew lost Chark in the afternoon. Should probably bail out. Yeah, yeah. Although you you would have still expected more against the Miami defense that just can't pressure the quarterback. What does that mean for Matt Ryan? Oh. Should you pivot if Julio is not active? Well, he still has his number one option, Jason. Oh, oh man. I feel like I walked right into that, <laughs> but you didn't set me up. <laughs> you, like, you let me put this trap down for you, and I will now step into it. Exactly, <laughs> Jason. What would you think of the gas man last night? Oh yeah, Miles twenty-seven touch gas can. Oh man, twenty-seven touch, just over ten half point PPR points. Um, I think he's not true. Uh, desperation flex play. All right, it's, I, four, the, it's fourteen fantasy points. Well, and that, a half point is that our league where you get is a, it point a little bit per, more? Yeah, you, you get okay. a, a point I, one I, per rush. I stand corrected then. Uh, but like Miles Gaskin, you're you're not wrong, Jason. He's a desperation flex. This type of volume is look, it's intriguing. It's twenty seven touches. Give me a player with twenty seven chances to do something special with yes. the ball. It's very difficult to come by that type of volume, and it's it's you know mostly just jocular in nature here over here. We're making jokes about Miles Gaskin, but. I remember making these exact same jokes last year about Devontae Parker at the beginning of the year. The Dolphins were the worst team. We're going to be the worst team in the NFL. Devontae Parker was showing out having some big games, and it was, well, he's on the Dolphins. So while I'm not proclaiming Miles Gaskin is going to turn into that, it's don't don't just overlook what he is doing, what the volume he is getting because he's on the Miami Dolphins. Jordan Howard, 16, carries on the year, 12 yards gained, three touchdowns. How Are you, like, the Miami, are you seriously telling me that Miles Gaskin 
couldn't do what Jordan Howard is doing from the one right now? I actually think he probably couldn't. I, I watched Miles Gaskin get finger tackled, you know, on the outside. It wasn't <laughs> even a, an arm even tackle. <laughs> it was just he went down like a rag doll. He's a little guy. Sure. And he cannot break a tackle. But, I don't know if he broke one last night. But we I mean we saw Jordan Howard at at the, the on the two or whatever it was. When they go into jumbo and try and force his way through, it This is the employee that you hired and you thought you'd give important responsibilities to, and then you hired some other employees, and then you're like, We gotta find something for this guy to do. Exactly. We've gotta find some uh can you organize the uh the stock room? It's a really important part. The stock room has to stay it's organized. Super important. The business would crumble without you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So um it's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. All right. Every Friday, we have a weekly giveaway to a supporter from jointhefoot.com. This week's item from pristineauction.com that we're giving away, a signed Kenny Galladay jersey. Oh, man. This I'll bet the material on that jersey is so smooth. So you've got a very smooth Kenny Galladay jersey over there. It goes to Brandon Maloney. All right. I thought for a second it was Lawrence Maroney, but it's Brandon Maloney. Mm. All right. Well, a little congratulations. PristineAuction.com if you want to check out some of their daily auctions. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. The website's the fantasyfootballers.com. We got the start sit tool, player profiles up there, rankings, always doing more to uh to give you more each and every week for fantasy football. We talked about the Thursday night game already. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. All right, this was big. Zach Moss been ruled out. Buffalo Bills running back Zach Moss will not play on Sunday. Devin Singletary will have a chance to take it up to 100. Yeah, and he will share the backfield with TJ Yeldon. Mm. So Devin Singletary will yeah. have a chance to take it to 100. Yeah, he's in play. Rams Malcolm Brown returned to practice on Thursday, got in a full session. Cam Akers is not coming along as quickly. You're probably going to have Malcolm Brown and Daryl Henderson. Yeah, I, I think if I uh, if I were to start one of those, it would be Daryl Henderson. And I think he's a, a, a desperation flex play that could work out. Devontae Adams, chance to play in week three does not look great. Sunday night game, so you need to have a pivot option in the Sunday night or Monday night game ready to go. If you do not have one of those on your rosters or if there is not someone on the waiver wire, then you might need to start someone Sunday morning not That's, knowing whether you have Devontae Adams. I agree. Julio Jones' status up in the air for Sunday's matchup. I watched Ian Rappaport talk about it this morning. Uh, Truly up in the air. Apparently this injury is something Julio's been dealing with since before the season began. And uh, after the game, he had come out and said, yeah, I can deal with it. But the team might have to say, no, you can't. Mike and I <laughs> both have teams that have – This is ridiculous, Julio man. Jones and Devontae Adams. I mean, you want a team that has Julio and Devontae. That's a pretty good one-two punch. But it's – what? I, w I was told that zero RB is safer for the <laughs> health of my players. Yeah, not true, apparently. <laughs> Here's good news. Kenny Galladay, limited in practice Wednesday and Thursday, expected to play. Are you starting him? Is he in? Yeah, we, we've talked about being hesitant when players rush back from an injury. I, I don't feel like he has rushed back. He took his time, took the entire time off, and he, he should be a fine play. That is a high-scoring affair. Arizona, Detroit, it's a 55-point over-under. <laughs> A.J. Brown... <laughs> I forgot I had a button. A.J. Brown remains sidelined at Titans practice on Thursday. In or out, A.J. Brown? I am going to say out. Yeah. George Kittle saw some clips of him practicing. Going to be a game-time decision. Bone bruise on the same knee as an MCL sprain. You think he's in or out? I believe he will play this week. And it it's nice because if he doesn't play, you put in Jordan Reed. If he plays, you put in George it, Kittle. It's – yeah. I guess you're right about that. I'm just saying, if you have George Kittle, right. you might not have had you know another great option, no Fant or uh, Gasicki on the waiver wire. Jordan Reed was there, so you, you're kind of safe here. But uh, if you're streaming Jordan Reed and you don't know if Kittle's going to play, then you've got a roster two tight ends 
to figure out who to put in because you're yeah. not playing Jordan Reed with Kittle active, right? Correct, correct. Yeah, that breaks the rule. It breaks rule 81. Uh, Jack Doyle returned to a limited practice on Monday. Boo. I mean, yeah, like Jack Doyle. I don't want to boo the man, but come on. You just want Mo Alleycox to run uh, wild, free, and cause uh, small earthquakes. Uh, Indianapolis, do the right thing. Do the right thing. Mo Alleycox is the better play for your let, team. Let Jack Doyle heal up and yes. rest. All right, Sammy Watkins is still in the concussion protocol. Uh, Jerry Judy, limited in practice. You think he's in or out? Jerry Judy. A lot I, of people might I, be wanting to play him. I think he plays. I don't really want to play him, but he, he's in. Yeah, it seems I think. like he ha the team is in desperate need of him. Deontay Johnson returned to full practice on Thursday, but Juju did not. Juju Smith-Schuster did not practice Wednesday or Thursday. In or out, Juju? Let's see what happens today. I mean, I, I would think so. He did post a... Uh, an IG picture that said he is playing. Yeah, I, I think he's in, but Deontay Johnson, greater sign, Juju Smith-Schuster. Jamison Crowder, Brashad Perryman, both out for the Jets. I don't think they will play. Based on them being out. Yep. Genius. Darren Waller did not practice on Thursday. Neither did... Uh, yeah, that this is the big one. It Josh is. Jacobs didn't either. Now, both of those players could have had an extra day due to the Monday night game, but there is concern out there. That, yeah, I, I'm not concerned yet. Because it was a Monday night game, usually Wednesday is a is a veteran day off for players that are a little banged up. And so Thursday, being the Monday night game, would, would be the veteran day off. If they obviously are um, not practicing today, that would be a nightmare. So you do have the Injury Blitz podcast over at jointhefoot.com that will come out this afternoon with updates based on the Friday practice reports. We're obviously recording this early Friday morning. So if you want to catch up on the injury news, uh, we also have game day alerts that will come out with the inactives right before the games begin on Sunday. And Mike will be live uh, on all of our social network platform platforms on uh, <laughs> Sunday. I don't, I don't know what I was doing there. You lost your way. I did lose my way. You're going to be live though, right? That is correct. Uh, if you want to get ready for that, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Subscribe. Click the bell. Fantasy Forecast. All right, we covered six games yesterday, so if you don't hear your matchup today, that's where they are. The Cincinnati Bengals at 0-2 take on the Philadelphia Eagles at 0-2. What was the chuckle? Just that these are both 0-2 uh, teams. It's right. just a, a battle for that first win between the Bengals and Eagles. Eagles are four-and-a-half-point favorites. It's a 47-and-a-half-point over-under. It's been rough for Philadelphia. Now, Cincinnati, their 0-2 is different than the Philadelphia 0-2. Their 0-2 has been close games, promise from Joe Burrow. They feel good. They feel good right That's now. That's a good 0-2. Yes. I mean, genuinely, the, the Bengals are thrilled with what they've seen. They've been in these games. Joe Burrow looks like the real deal. The Eagles 0-2 is just disgusting collapse of their quarterback and the health of their team. Uh, it's, it's, you know... It, it, it's not good. Not good vibes for the Eagles. All right. Thus far, uh, we've seen the Eagles very vulnerable against opposing tight ends. Their, their defense hasn't really done much against opposing running backs either. You know, Drew Sample's somebody that's been brought up because Joe Burrow seems to target the tight end position. He's, he's, week one, he's he's had an affinity for it. He is, yeah, he's definitely interesting in, in, in replacement of Uzama. He, he immediately saw nine targets last week. That wasn't even a full game. Now it was a script where Joe Burrow had to continue to throw. But the Eagles are uh, – look, the Eagles have been giving up points to the tight end position. I don't know that I'm starting – Feels like it Drew's, could be a little Drew's bit of a sample this week, but I've I, trap. He well, it, I don't think it's a trap. It's just a. Uh, there's probably better options that you're that you're more willing to start, but I think that Drew Sample is a good speculative ad at this point. Uh, Joe Mixon, is he still an auto start? He's still an auto start, yeah, but uh, RB two auto start. For yeah, now. I mean, I, I, I would even consider, a, you know, in, in the flex range, I know a lot of people were deciding between James Robinson, Joe Mixon. Some people selected James Robinson to play, and I'm sure they're very happy today. Miles Sanders, he's an auto start. He yes. had a great week one, tons of touches. You you don't have Jalen Rager this week. Hopefully Carson Wentz can kind of lean on the running game, getting Miles Sanders the ball out of the backfield. 
he is set up for success against an, a, a Bengals defense that is giving up a ton of fantasy points to opposing running backs, 35 and a half points per game. Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb ran all over the Bengals last week. I think that Miles Sanders will touch the ball 20-plus times and have a phenomenal fantasy game. The thing that we need to see in the fantasy football community, this is the Zach Ertz game. That It's got to happen, man. Uh, I drafted Zach Ertz in quite a few spots. It has been yeah, disappointing that, that that you went in on Zach Ertz because you, you had to take him in the fifth round. Meanwhile, guys like Noah Fant, who were late round guys, are look like they might be <laughs> their their season long prospects are looking much better. But now you have no Alshon Jeffrey. He has been ruled out. Jalen Rager is out. Yes, Deshaun Jackson is the the number one wide receiver, but. Jason, are you where are you? Where's your confidence level with Zach Ertz and, and knowing that Dallas Goddard is right there to break your heart when he stands up? And you thought Ertz caught a touchdown, but it is in fact Dallas oh, Goddard. I hate that their numbers are yes. eighty-eight and eighty-six. It's like oh, it's, oh man, it's the wrong. <laughs> it's always the wrong guy, no matter yes. which one you're rooting for. Uh, my confidence level in Zach Ertz is ninety-five uh, percent. My confidence okay. level in Goddard is ninety percent. I'm. If I have these two players, I'm playing them. I think the matchup is fine this week. They're going to be relied on. Goddard has eight plus targets in five straight games going back to the playoffs. And that does not, I mean, it does take away from Zach Ertz, especially around the goal line, but it doesn't mean that Zach Ertz isn't very valuable in his own right. You, you start both those guys. AJ Green leads the league in air yards, 22 targets in just two games. He talked about being a little bit rusty, had Denzel Ward in the last matchup. AJ Green to me is, uh, he's a play this week. Yes. Uh, Tyler Boyd, yeah. he was okay last week. Yeah, he came through with a touchdown at the end of the game. I don't I don't want to play Boyd. You still Boyd go green right over Boyd? I would still, yes. Deshaun I don't know Jackson? If I would. I'm going to follow the volume. Yeah, I mean, uh, you say follow the volume, but, you know, Tyler Boyd had eight targets last week, seven for 72. I know the touchdown came late, but he, it looked like a good rapport, and, and you're going to have the number one guy on A.J. Green still. So. <laughs> Burrow has struggled throwing to the outside. You know, Tyler Boyd leading the league in slot routes. He's he's higher probability targets. Yeah, and you look at what Burrow did in college with Justin Jefferson as sure. a slot wide sure. receiver and the fact that he's using the tight end so much. It seems like uh, I think you could play Boyd. Deshaun Jackson, can you confidently play him this week? I believe so, yes. Yes. His snaps went down tremendously. Uh, or, I'm sorry, he was 77% yes. in week two, went up from 38% in week one, and then no, Jalen Rager should have a deep shot in this one. Yes. The Texans take on the Steelers. Texans are 0-2. Steelers are four-point favorites. Implied point total, 24.5 for Pittsburgh, 20 for Houston. The real conversation to me in this game is whether or not you have the fortitude to bench Deshaun Watson because no team yeah. in football has been worse at protecting the quarterback than Houston, and no team has been better at pressuring the quarterback than Pittsburgh. Uh, I heard J.J. Zacharyson say Pittsburgh is currently 44% of the time putting a pressure on the quarterback. That's a lot. And then Deshaun Watson, I think, you get to the point where you're feeling the pressure regardless of whether it's there with that Houston offensive line and how it's playing. That does not give you a great deal of confidence. Pittsburgh's defense is outstanding, and you haven't had anybody step up to make a big play for Houston. That seems to be what's missing. You had a goose egg from Will Fuller last week. DeAndre Hopkins is no longer there. D David Johnson disappeared last week in a tough matchup against Baltimore. It doesn't – I mean, do you have confidence on the Houston side of the ball at all this week? I don't have a ton. I mean, I'm, I'm going to play Brandon Cooks. He – we don't know the status of Will Fuller right now. Well, he's not on the injury report, so he is going to oh, play. Okay, I'm he's not. That is the status. He's not will, on the injury report. I will still play Brandon Cooks. Uh, I don't trust that he is not on the injury report. That seems very suspicious well, he's, to me. He's likely to go back on soon. <laughs> that's that's what I mean. So, in terms of the the confidence play of Deshaun Watson, I mean, at at this point, if if in the week you were holding on, saying I'm going to play Watson, and now you're starting to get the cold feet. Your options are very limited, but let's let's say, would you rather play Matthew Stafford against Arizona, who yes. might be on the waiver wire? Yep, yes. I would play Stafford. Would you rather play Carson Wentz no. against the Cincinnati Bengals? No, I'll take a shot with Watson there. I'm with Jason. 
All right, and look, he, surprisingly, he might be on your waiver wire, especially with considering the performance. You know where I'm going? Tom Brady. Tom Brady against Denver. Where are you? Who are you playing? I, I would I would play Deshaun Watson. Okay, I would look for the the running ability, and I, I'll play I think, Brady. I think Denver's defense has has been really solid. Um, Ryan Tannehill is someone I would play over Deshaun Watson, but I I'm not out on Deshaun Watson. However, ironically, I, I don't think I would play Brandon Cooks. The, Pittsburgh, over the last season and a half, have just shut down wide receivers. There's really, outside of him, there's not a lot of options I want from the Texan side of the ball. No, this feels like Houston's heading to 0-3. If David Johnson does not get a touchdown this week, which let's just say that's 50-50, but if he lands on the side where he doesn't get a touchdown, does he get 10 fantasy points? Uh, it, probably. Yeah, I mean, he through might. The air. He might just volume of receptions get there. Jay, I'll say this for Brandon Cooks. Uh, Pro Football Focus has him lining up against Steve Nelson, Daniel Jones, and Jeff Driscoll with his plan combined for a passer rating of 137.5 when they targeted Steve Nelson, and that's who Brandon Cooks is. At least they're projecting him to see the time against him. So that that's where I have the sure. confidence that. The target share is going to be there for Cooks. I have no confidence in Fuller finishing this game. Uh, I think Cooks is an okay wide receiver three play with, and of course, Brandon Cooks has giant upside every week. Yeah, and he he also has injury risk every week too. Yeah, he, I just yeah, I just don't have is. the confidence because the target share last week there were zero targets to Will Fuller. So I mean, right now Will Fuller's out there, but I think you can hear us talk about Houston and and yeah. draw your own conclusions. It's, it's wild. just the process here. Let's. Let's start the guys on the other side of the ball. <laughs> James Conner, you can yes. play him for sure. Yep. Yeah, the Texans have been bad against running backs last year and this year. They've kept right up where they were at. So, yeah, Conner is a start. Uh, te the Texans have not given up a ton of fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. If James Conner is successful, you might not see the ceiling from Big Ben that you would hope for. Is he uh, – are you, like, looking to start Big Ben this week? So this is Big a Ben or Matthew Stafford. I would go Stafford there, but Big Ben or Deshaun Watson. Which side in this matchup? I would lean Big Ben. Yeah, I would too. I lean that way too. I'm really avoiding Watson this week, which might be very impossible for you to do based on where you drafted him. Mm -hmm. uh, which makes it tough. Uh, Deontay Johnson, of course, start of the week for Jason. He's in your lineup. Um, which will that means Jason's you're hanging your hat on Deontay Johnson back to back weeks because you're taking it to a hundred player. One for one. Come on, baby. <laughs> so, These trends continue. If uh, Juju did miss this matchup, is Chase Claypool an interesting shot in the dark? Over. Would you start him over no. Cooks or Fuller? No. Okay. Not not yet. I, I love him sitting on the bench and seeing if those snaps can continue to increase, but I'm not going to start him yet. The Jets take on the Colts. Jets are 0-2. Colts are 11.5-point home favorites. It's a 44-point <laughs> over-under. That line has gone up mm -hmm. with Jameson Crowder being ruled out. Mike is enjoying every minute that's, of it. That's ridiculous. 11 points? Offensive, 11 and a half. Offensive oh, genius Adam Gase. Oh, it's hyperdrive time. Uh, Number two. 32nd in points per drive, 31st in plays per game. So he's slow and inefficient. You know, it, it's just kind of ridiculous. Here, let me make it simple. Don't start any Jets in this game. Yeah. But Andy, <laughs> no, you shut you shut your mouth. I mean, sure, Frank Gore, Frank Gore, if you need to, uh, Braxton Berrios in like super deep desperation plays. Don't tell your friends about it if you do start any Jets. But our recommendation yeah, change to your you, team name, uh -huh. I completely hide your identity. Yeah, not Jason Moore <laughs> has started Braxton Berrios. Yeah, I, I, you know our recommendation is don't start a Jet. All right, uh, Naeem Hines only had nine snaps last week. It was insane. The team says they want to get him involved, but they're th 11 and a half point favorites. This just seems like yeah. smash Jonathan Taylor. Yes. Stay away from Naeem Hines. Yeah. And look, do not uh, do not drop Naeem Hines. No. He, he, just put him on your bench. There will be better days ahead for Hines, but it, it is not in a matchup where they are 11 and a half point favorites. Jason, any chance you want to play Phillip Rivers this week? No. T.Y. Hilton. I think you can play T.Y. Hilton. Um, he's better than what his fantasy finish has been. We've talked about the 50-yard touchdown that he missed out on. 
your outlook on him if he doesn't drop that one ball that landed in his lap would be completely different. Um, so I would start T.Y. Hilton. Through two weeks, the Colts' defense, number one in terms of fantasy points given up to opposing quarterbacks. I think they're going to stay there. Yeah, they'll, they'll do all right against Sam Darnold. Uh, the rookie for the Colts, Michael Pittman Jr., would – not that we're, we're going to start him, Andy, but I'll ask you. If we, we know where I am on Chase Claypool. Who would you rather stash on your bench right now, Pittman or Claypool? Yeah, it's Pittman because okay. of where he, he slots into the depth chart. Uh, we saw him targeted frequently last week, which was a little unexpected. We didn't think he'd be active. But with Paris Campbell you know, being indefinitely yeah. out probably for the year, you're looking at Pittman with more opportunity. He's also a touchdown threat. So I lean that direction. Okay. Are Car you, are you, are, is anybody starting Mo Ali Cox? Do we have the, the the courage to do that even if Jack Doyle is active? If Jack Doyle is active, I will start neither. If Jack okay. Doyle is out, I would be willing to start Mo Ali Cox. He turned 27 last Saturday. He feet is tall. I was <laughs> going to say 27 he, he's feet grown, is tall. still growing. He's, what is that, pinch to grow an inch? Been, <laughs> he's like 20, got a lot of pinches. 27 feet tall. Carolina Panthers. Stop pinching me. <laughs> You've been pinching me. Hey, you me. down there. I, I just imagine he sounds like Andre the Giant when he talks. Well, that's how Giants, I yeah. mean, you know. That's their voice. I've seen movies. That's seen how Giants that's talk. That's how Giants Says talk. We all Jason, know that. The authority. <laughs> the Carolina Panthers at 0-2 take on the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chargers are six-and-a-half point favorites in this one. Justin Herbert will start. No Christian McCaffrey on the Carolina side. We know how uh, disastrous it's been on defense for Carolina in terms of the running backs. So Austin Eckler, Joshua Kelly, mm -hmm. start them both. Yep. And you can do it with more confidence than if Tyrod Taylor was out there because Eckler was heavily involved. I saw, uh, went through and watched every snap from Eckler. He looked outstanding this past week in terms of breaking tackles, the extra yard, it's just a matter of time until he gets a big play, and it probably is going to come this week. And Joshua Kelly's so involved now in this offense. Mm -hmm. Lots of work inside the 10-yard line, goal line work. 26 total opportunities last week for Joshua Kelly. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, if, if I had both of these players on my roster, I would start both in the same game. I, like, the, like a Brown situation? I, exactly. I could not imagine benching Eckler or Joshua Kelly this week. Uh, the Carolina defense – is so easy to score on the ground. They're giving up rushing touchdowns left, right, and center, and uh, awesome, excellent, and Joshua <laughs> Kelly will, you know, they could they could both score in this game very easily. I think everybody's looking for an opportunity on the other side of the ball with what Carolina's done. I mean, Robbie Anderson, two games into the season, 115 and 109 receiving yards. DJ Moore, Tons of targets, probably even more coming his way without Christian McCaffrey. And even Curtis Samuel, to me, is an interesting play because I think he's going to have more than five carries in this game as they look to fill the void that is Christian McCaffrey and also receive some attention in the passing game. Mike Davis has been the big fab pickup. When you are kind of sifting through options here, how are you prioritizing the Carolina offense in this game? Because uh, the defense sure. in, in, in Los Angeles is tough. It, it is, but just from what we have seen from the, the pace of play and the volume, DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson, are they're, they're in. Like they're, they're locked in, guys. I know both of them kind of padded the, the old stat line at the end of the game there. When, when but they can do that again. They could do that again, absolutely. And again and again <laughs> this year. So, uh, so th those guys are must-starts for me. You're probably in a situation if you – if you paid for Mike Davis, that you have to play him. Uh, and, what about and, uh, in the same matchup, Mike Davis with the starters role in quotes, or Joshua Kelly with all that opportunity? Joshua Kelly, higher touch. What about Jarek McKinnon? Maybe limited touches, but high upside against the Giants. Oof. Or Mike I, Davis. I would go Jarek McKinnon there. I, I think this is not a great matchup for Mike Davis. We know that Mike Davis is going to get at least three games because that's. The, the minimum that Christian McCaffrey has to miss now having gone on that short-term IR, the next two matchups are going to be Arizona and Atlanta. Those are where I think I'm more confident playing Mike Davis than against this Los Angeles defense that is 
you know, proven. I think I would take him over McKinnon. I would take Mike Davis over McKinnon. Okay. Uh, Davis, eight targets last week. J.K. Dobbins, Monday night, or Mike Davis? Mike Davis. Okay. Any, anything else in this matchup? I mean, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. Keenan Allen, you could play. Mike Williams is still more of a deeper play. Yeah, I, th I think that's how I view it. Now with Justin Herbert, uh, the man behind center, uh, I definitely put Keenan Allen ahead as a start, and Mike Davis is someone that I would prefer to not start. And keep, keep playing Hunter Henry. He's our tight end five on the week. He's been very solid. He's not going to let you down in terms of, like, goosing you. Where oh, are you – like, this is a deeper question, but are you willing to start Herbert? Interesting. He was the quarterback 13 last week. He had ran a passing, the ball a lot. He had a pass touchdown. He ran the ball four times and had a rushing touchdown. He obviously has there. great weapons here. Austin and, Eckler can and the take anything to great. the house. Keenan Allen, the matchup is great. Here's I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. I think just mistake prone nature of the game. Maybe I'd go somewhere else. Yeah, and I, I could also see because of how poor the rushing defense is here that they might have the ability to take the ball out of his hands a little bit more than they did last week, uh, you know, against the Chiefs. That being said, maybe you're playing DFS and you want to make a, a speculative ad that is a little contrarian. Maybe that's where a Herbert Mike Williams, you know, stack yeah. or a Herbert Austin Eckler uh, is good. In fact, if you play DFS, you need to take a look at our DFS pass. Um, it's it's been it's been very successful so far this season. We have tons of write ups, tons of articles in there. They have been absolutely crushing. We have a lineup generator that can help you on you know all the different platforms. It's it's been truly our our best season for DFS. We're getting left, right, and center. Just people sharing their winnings, sharing you know the 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 tools that have helped them and. If you are, uh, you know, playing DFS and using the D you can get that at DFSPass.com. That's the easiest route to it, or just go to the website. Um, you can also upgrade if you had the Ultimate Draft Kit to the DFS Pass, mm -hmm. so that you don't have to pay uh, the full price if you had the Ultimate Draft Kit. But I would also recommend you got to check out our DFS podcast. Yes, it's it's new and revamped this year and has been unbelievably good. If you if you played DFS this weekend. Definitely listen to the Fantasy Footballers DFS show with Kyle the Boar Gogan and Matthew Betts. You can, you know, get it wherever you get this current podcast. What a great suggestion. Yeah, uh, it's just been amazing. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, one and one, taking on the 0 and 2 Denver Broncos. Broncos falling apart. Buccaneers, five point road favorites. It's a 43 and a half point over under, not leaving a lot of points there for the Broncos this week. Jeff Driscoll oh. going to get the start, looking for one big score. He's got a plan. Melvin Gordon might be the only real fantasy play on that side of the ball. If Jerry Judy's injury concerns this week, his questionable status has you wavering, I can't imagine you're taking a shot outside of Gordon Fant. Uh, no. I, I, keep an eye on KJ Hamler. See what happens. He is also another rookie that it, for the Denver Broncos that you could put on your bench and just see what happens this weekend, but he's not a he's not a start yet. Fant has gotten into the end zone each of the first two weeks. Last week saw five targets, four receptions for 57 yards. Driscoll is competent, and I think Fant will end up with four more receptions. So yeah, Driscoll's fine. He, he He's a fine backup quarterback. He can put up yards. And Noah Fant, man, he has been... He he has absolutely blown all expectations I had for Noah Fant. Where you you know you had we did we did convince you to put him in the yes. breakout can category of our UDK. Yeah, no, he he fit all the criteria, but it's you know like when you were making those choices in the off season of which tight end are you going to go all in on, and, and it felt like Hawkinson and Noah Fant were identical situations, both first round picks, both uh, very athletically gifted second year players it just who did you go in on and so far man Noah Fant has to me completely proven as long as he's getting the opportunity he's going to be excellent just excellent for fantasy football and he, the, the opportunity with Cortland Sutton out is not going away here's a hot stat for you the Tampa Bay uh, offense wide receivers have only seen 52 percent of the team's targets this year with Winston last year they've averaged 
Actually, over the last four years, 65% of the targets. Sounds like Tom Brady. Yeah, it sounds a little bit like Tom Brady, but also you've got a two-game sample size here where one game you had a hurt Mike Evans right. and the other game you didn't have Chris Godwin. So uh, you would you would expect the wide receiver core as a as a whole to be down on targets. Okay. So are you, do you – I am not worried about – Godwin, or, Godwin Evans? or Evans. Those are never going to be outside of my lineup. At running back, I think I'm making the the switch to Leonard Fournette from Ronald Jones. He is. You like ping pong, do you? I yeah. I don't. I mean, when I say remember I'm what the a switch, ping pong sounds like. <laughs> yes, yes, sounds yes. like a lot like a clock. <laughs> exactly. Clippity clop. <laughs> Clippity clop. Um, yeah, we, you know, when I say I'm making the move from Ronald Jones to Leonard Fournette, it's mostly a lie because I don't have. Either of these players, this was one of those backfields to avoid right leading up yep. to the draft season. Uh, but if you had both of those players, I would start Leonard Fournette over Ronald Jones. With them as heavy favorites, it does seem like you could go that way until, of course, Fournette fumbles or misses a blitz pickup, and then they rotate somebody else in there instantaneously yep. as a horrible punishment. Yeah, Bruce Arians. Dink. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, uh, Gronkowski's been awful. Don't play him. Please don't play him. Don't roster him why yeah are people still rostering that's an excellent point gronk don't don't bench him he does not need to be on anybody's roster agreed yeah there's there's no reason i don't think that the foot clan had a lot of rob gronkowski no we no. were we there, were there was off. definitely excitement during the off season when it was announced gronk is going to be back he's going to be back with tom brady i want to throw the question real quick to producer al borland all right who in fact dropped all 100 dollars of his fab to pick up Rob oh, Gronkowski. Oh, that's right. How, how is that going, Owl? It's fine. I mean, the, the fab that I dropped <laughs> reset at the beginning of the season. That's, so that's a oh. fair point. He had a good he answer. Did have a He's good not answer. cracking the starting roster, though. Yeah. That was in Dynasty, right? Yeah. Yeah. I remember being sad that I didn't get him in Dynasty. And now I'm not so sad anymore. All right. I'm excited about this game, guys. Detroit. The Lions getting back Kenny Galladay. Mm -hmm. They're 0-2, taking on the Arizona Cardinals in Arizona. Cardinals are five-and-a-half point favorites. It's a 55-point over-under. Yes. That's an implied point total for Arizona of over 30 points. The Lions at uh, just under 25 That's points. That's not too shabby either. It is not. And this, I'm just excited about the fantasy back and forth that we should see in this game. Hopkins is currently our consensus wide receiver one on the week. And Kenny Galladay, if the team is telling the truth, which we we hope, they've taken their time. He could have possibly played last week. They gave him another week of rest. And what's really been missing from this Detroit offense and Matthew Stafford's, you know, what the numbers told us about last year is the deep, big playability mm -hmm. that they were they were going to the well with that over and over again last year. And it's dropped tremendously without Galladay in the lineup. They, he gets them back. Arizona's defense, it's been good through two weeks, but they, he hasn't seen – they haven't seen a Kenny Galladay, Matthew Stafford. Correct. I think it's going to be just a tremendous week for both offenses, and it's almost a matter of finding who not to play in this game than finding who to start. Yeah, I, I would be willing to start uh, just, um, just about everybody except for one of the – Lions running backs. I don't know, you know, the the gamble to take with Swift, carry on. What Adrian if you had Peterson. to? If I had to, I would start DeAndre Swift because he is kind of slotted in as the receiving work guy. This is a game on the road where they're down. Uh, Arizona's pace of play is, you know, they're leading the league in no huddle rate and the pace. So you're going to have pass catching backs on the field is my guess, unless Patricia comes in and tries to say, well, this is what the expectation is, so we're going to take over this game, put in a lot of Adrian Peterson and slow the game down because that's what bothers the Cardinals. I could see that happen, and so I don't want to be in with any of those running backs. Cardinals are favorites in this one. Drake's my start of the week. Hopkins, of course, he's in your lineup. I will throw this out there. Christian Kirk, I don't think he plays in this game. He's questionable, uh, so it's going to be Hopkins. It's going to be Larry Fitzgerald, and I think it's going to be Dan Arnold. Ooh, I think you're going to see. Postman. I think the postman makes his uh, makes a delivery this I week. I think he makes a delivery into the end zone. All right. I was going to ask how you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I was going to ask. Okay, what's the temperature check then on the legend, Larry Fitzgerald? Seven receptions, fifty yards. Like that's not. 
anything incredibly special, but PPR flex this week. But PPR situation, yeah. seven for 50, you would take that in your flex. Oh, I will take that, Mike. <laughs> yes, I will. All right. PPR flex, Larry Fitzgerald. I'd play Fitzgerald over, you know, Mike Williams with Justin Herbert this week. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I, right. I would as well. And in DFS, I know it's a, a deep, dark shot out there. But <laughs> dark, huh? Well, I, I, I think cave or well, just depression wise as a number <laughs> two, you know, a, a second round pick. But Andy Isabella, mm. you know, had you mean because Arizona could have taken DK Metcalf and instead they took Andy Isabella. Is that the depression that oh, you're feeling? Well, no, no, it yeah. was Terry McLaurin. They, they could have taken Terry McLaurin. But oh, they took, is that oh, God. Um, Andy Isabella? So, yeah, I mean, you know, depression and, and sadness. But the point is, wow, that I, I was having a great day, Jason. <laughs> yeah, the uh he still has crazy speed. And last week you saw Isabella get deep. And if Kyler hit him in stride, it's a 70, 80 yard touchdown strike. He could do that anytime. He, he's so fast. One of the th things that I do to not feel depressed about the situation is remember what Bill O'Brien did for us. Mm. Hopkins, David Johnson gone. And Andy has emulated this in our league of record. Yeah, that is actually a funny story. I, I managed to trade for DeAndre Hopkins this past week, and you, you managed not to. I was in the works, and you stole him out from under me. <laughs> and, uh, no, I traded uh, – I made the choice in our league to trade David Johnson and Robert Woods to pick up DeAndre Hopkins. All right. Had a little bit of depth. All right, Kenny G, what are the actual expectations? Could he be a top 15 play this week? I don't. I, or do I'm you not, have hesitancy with the injury? I'm not I, expecting top fifteen, but I'm, I'm, if Kenny Galladay is active, I it will play him. That's that's where I'm at. If he's active, I'm going to play him. But I I do temper the high ceiling. You've got Patrick Peterson, who's probably going to be on in most of the game, and he is coming back from you know at at the very least, even if he's fully healthy, he hasn't been practicing for a couple of weeks. So you know, I see him as a wide receiver 15 type this week. Let's take that minuscule over under and upgrade it. The Dallas Cowboys go to Seattle to take on the Seahawks. Oof. It's a 56 Oof. and a half Whoa. point over under the Seahawks are five point favorites. Russell Wilson has been pretty much perfect on the season, both for fantasy and for, uh, you know, this Seahawks team as they sit two and zero after beating the Patriots. Dak was outstanding last week in terms of fantasy production, despite the first half basically non-existing. Pace of play, I mean, it's outstanding. Dallas, number one in the league. Seattle's defense has allowed the most plays per game. This is just a match made in heaven. And you know where Seattle has been very vulnerable is inside. So I think Dalton Schultz and Like CD, indoors? Uh, yeah, dome games. Probably. I mean, anywhere they're playing, you're probably right. But I'm looking at the slot, and I'm looking at what Dalton Schultz running routes, and I'm looking at C.D. Lamb, who's played almost uh, entirely in the slot. He's my start of the week. I think you're going to see a battle, um, one of those fantasy football back and forth in this one. Yeah, th this is a game where, again, I'm, I would be willing to start your start of the week in C.D. Lamb, I would be willing to start Michael Gallup. I would be willing to start Mari Cooper. There could very well, you know, it's a, it's, it's a rare situation where you could have a single game where three wide receivers from the same team all perform. But if Russell Wilson is on the other side and that defense is currently the 32nd ranked against wide receivers, this, like you said, it's a, it's a matchup made in heaven. You're going to start Tyler Lockett. You're going to start D.K. Metcalf. Who aren't you starting? Probably not going to take a shot on any of the tight ends in Seattle. Yeah. I don't think they're worth the shot. I agree. They're just so deep at the wide receiver position and, and they're just he's throwing the ball to Carson. I mean, Carson's getting a lot of targets and only one target for Olsen last week and you're not going beyond Olsen. And speaking of the the volume for Chris Carson did bounce back. He, 45 snaps in week 1, that jumped up to 63% in week 2. Yeah, 20 total opportunities. Uh you know, I I shared some hesitation of because Chris Carson likewise line, Chris Carson's stat line week one was not a sustainable thing you were very happy that uh, a player who was on on the field uh less than half the time came through with a monster day but the and then then it was you know read read further into it he missed most of training camp hopefully they're just easing him in and so far through that second week that's what it looked like it was he will still be 
the main guy for the Seahawks. Yeah, if the identity of the offense continues to, or if the defense can't really stop anybody, continues to be this passing game, then you may see you know that volume stay a little bit lower. But the touches in, in Seattle are going to be high-value touches for Chris Carson, and the passing game involvement's great. The Packers at 2-0 and take on the New Orleans Saints. Saints are three-point favorites. It's a 52.5 point over-under. It's another great game for fantasy purposes here. Uh, huge over-under, implied point totals uh, at or above 25. It's just a matter of what do you believe about this New Orleans offense right now? Because there's you know one player that you can have a great deal of confidence in, but beyond, you know, what? where are you at with Drew Brees? Mm. I would prefer to not start Drew Brees this week personally. I mean, you saw the Packers. They were great against quarterbacks last season on the, the uh, in totality. This year, they're middle of the pack, but, you know, they've, they've had some games where they're scoring 40 points. So the opposing quarterbacks just airing it out. Here, you saw Drew Brees look poor last week, probably isn't going to have Michael Thomas, or if he does, he's going to have a hobbled Michael Thomas. I would, you know, I, I gave several recommendations uh, to bench Drew Brees based on other options people have had this week. Drew Brees or your stream of the week, your favorite quarterback of all time, oh. Mitchell Trubisky taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Gross. I'm not, oh, I'm not, uh, I'd probably go Drew Brees. <laughs> I'm not going to bench Drew Brees for Mitchell Trubisky. You know, Two you know weeks what can't of Drew happen? Brees, 24th and 22nd in fantasy finishes. I'm I pretty sure Mitch, Mitch is above oh, him in both weeks. Mitch is definitely above them in both weeks. But Mitch has the special ability. I mean, he is a streamer. I think he could have a good week. Just have a hard time putting him. Facing Atlanta. <sighs> yeah, but he, it's, halftime it's easily could be. Mitch. It's easily Mitch. Halftime could be Nick Foles, and you know it. No. No, no, no. no it's it easily won't. Mitch. It's easily they're missed. two and zero. They're two and zero, <laughs> and he played. And if you watch the game, he played outstanding last game. Outstanding, dimes all over the field. Mitch Trubisky MVP. Dimes, nickels, quarters. Right, so are we going Trubisky over Breeze? We are. We we That's are. That's what I'm saying. Are you? Yeah. Are you trying oh, to convince easily. me? We, look, we will support you. Want to jump on our backs? We will make that call. We will let you I ride want, with us. I want to have the sprained ankle, one arm around each of you, <laughs> as a hop along. Yeah, you carry me through this playing my, my own stream. This was your start of the week. Stream, stream. Okay, uh, Brooks. Do we have anything on today's uh, practice status for Michael Thomas yet? Not today. Not today's yet. the day you need to pay attention to. If Michael Thomas practices today, he's going to play, and if he plays, I'm going to play him. I don't have any fear of starting Michael Thomas if he thinks he's back. He's not somebody that has to. You know, this is not a hamstring where you, you know, one deep route, you're re-injured. I think Michael Thomas is somebody that has proven himself over the course of the last few years that if he's in your lineup, you're playing him. I would probably play him, but I do not have nearly the confidence you do. Like I would, I'm playing him because I feel like I don't have another option where I'm like, I'm going to start that well, guy. Let, let me put Thomas. you in the same exact boat with Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams is not trending the right direction. If he's active, are you taking the exact same logical approach to him as you do Michael Thomas? <sighs> because his injury is more likely to re-injure, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I, I think both of these guys are players that you will probably start, but through clenched teeth. The truth is, I see this game with, with a 52.5 point over-under, which is fantastic. I've I've worried about it. I, yeah, I see this seems... as, uh, look, I would take the under. Um, and, you know, the Packers' offense has been great. I mean, they scored 40-plus points in the first two games, but that was against you know, the Lions, and who was their other, uh, their week one? Who Vikings. The Packers, the Vikings. Yeah, the, Vi the Vikings. So let's let's say that Devontae Adams is out. What's your, how are you feeling about Aaron Rodgers now that he is, main weapons will be the Lazard King, Alan Lazard, and Marquez Valdez-Scantling? Um, it lowers him for sure, but I, I think you can add uh, the, the passing work from Aaron Jones to Aaron Rodgers. I think I'd be trying to find another option than Rodgers if he doesn't have Devontae Adams. Mitchell Trubisky. <laughs> or a Devontae <laughs> Adams-less no, Aaron Rodgers. No, give me Rodgers. Rodgers looks Mitch great Trubisky. right now. Oh, man. Oof. I mean, haven't we learned a lesson from Rodgers over the last few years? Well, Are you, He, he doesn't beat, have the flames yet. He's he got is, two games against two bad defenses. He's heating up. Yeah, but last year he destroyed 
bad defenses. Which is and not New Orleans. No, and it is the first two defenses he's played. He's I, I, I agree. I, I would play Mr. Bisky. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to try to throw the name out the door and go with the matchup. And Mitch has been great, and Mitch has got Atlanta. I'm going to hop in your arms. You're going to carry me over that <laughs> threshold. I'm going – you guys are carrying me uh, on the Mitch train everywhere. Now, there could be an opportunity, though, if Adams is out, to find some fantasy value at the wide receiver position in Green Bay. Is it Lazard or is it MBS for you? Mike is looking like a man who would like, rather... I would take I would take Marquise Valdez-Scantling, personally. I think he's the more talented wide receiver, and even though he struggles with drops that are absolutely infuriating, he's getting the targets, he's getting the depth of targets, He's got the snap percentages. Well, both of those guys have been on the field enough. Um, and more history, more draft capital, more talent. I would I would go MVS. What about this guy? Uh, Alva Kamara? Yeah. You Are you in on him this week? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he has been so good for fantasy yeah. through two weeks, and it should continue. Um, outside of if Michael Thomas is not out there, Traquan Smith? Traquan yeah. Smith or MVS in this game if both MBS. of the starters are not in? I would take MVS. I w oh, oh, yeah. I'll take the I'll take I'll take MVS. I'll, I'll take the underdogs. Yeah, I'll take MVS. That is a terrible question. Moving on. Kansas City Chiefs, Baltimore Ravens, Monday night football. Chiefs are two and oh, Ravens are two and oh. Ravens are three and a half point favorites. It's a a delightful 55 over under. We've got a lot of those this week. It's an incredible matchup. And the, the, the great part about it is that, I mean, there are so many fantasy relevant players here that are all started every single week because it's the Ravens and because it's the Chiefs that your league, whatever league you care about the most, there is a great chance that Monday Night Football will be the deciding factor. I haven't had that so far the last two weeks. I'm playing in a lot of leagues, and pretty much Sunday night, my games are over and decided, but they won't be this week, and that's that's a really exciting prospect just from the fun of mm -hmm. fantasy football. And Yeah, if you have Monday night plans, cancel them. You have Monday night plans. Yeah, yeah. Watch, this game. watch this game. Mahomes, Lamar, Jackson... Clyde Edwards, Alaire, Tyree Kill, Kelsey, right. Mark Andrews, maybe, oh. maybe Hollywood. You, Hollywood. You had the unfortunate circumstance that look, you maybe you have a wedding, maybe you're getting married on Monday night. You were. You need to push that thing. Yeah, you Tuesday. were getting married. You're not anymore. A <laughs> lot of Monday night and weddings. And the real thing is, she'll understand. Look, like a, like a childbirth. She'll understand. Postpone. If you point her to the schedule, if you point her to that over under, she'll say, "Yeah, let's table it." Right now, let me ask we, we this. Are dumb. Let me ask this question. These defenses are both good. Kansas City Chiefs defense has has really proven itself since the second half of last year. They obviously won a Super Bowl. They've started off looking great. The Ravens defense has looked better than it ever did last year with Calais Campbell in the middle, and we saw Mahomes struggle this past week against a good defense he got it he got it done in the end but is there a chance that this is a disappointing trap game no no there's not that's right that's right that no, is the, the right answer yeah you know one area that Kansas City struggled tremendously is against the running back position which is the one debate from this whole you know matchup that I'd like to bring up Kansas City's allowed the six most rushing yards third highest success rate to running backs mm. And this is a battle of heavyweights, which gives me more confidence that Ingram will get the majority of the work because this is a, you know, it's been cruise control for Baltimore. Not so much for Kansas City so far, but it has been for Baltimore. Now you finally have a game where it's not Gus Edwards burning the clock away because that's been his role. It's Ingram, and it might be more Dobbins than we've seen before. I think you might see more Dobbins in this game than you've seen thus far because of the fact it's going to be a highly competitive matchup. What do you guys think? Yeah, both teams know they're uh, going to need to score to win against the uh, the opposing offense. I I would personally, if I had Mark Ingram, I would be shopping him because he had a decent game this last week. I just don't want this decision every week. You walked through that, and it sounded pretty good for Mark Ingram. And if you say, well, so are you starting him? I go, I might have to. Like I, I, would, I, probably, I would be feeling good about him this week. Kansas yes, City's a great matchup. I'm not feeling great. I, like I said, I would probably start him. I 
took him as a top 20 back last week. But if I could convert him into someone that has a little bit more uh, clarity in their own backfield, I, I would do that. Mike, do you want to weigh in? I would do the exact same thing Jason's talking about. I would be trying to get out and get Mark Ingram on someone else's team. Hollywood Brown, disappointed through two weeks? No, I, I I don't think disappointed. One good week, one bad week. We've actually been looking to upgrade some of the player profile stuff. You'll see that soon. And what it has shown is how incredibly inconsistent wide receivers are. They, it, we, we just take that for granted because we've played forever and you see so many big games every single week. The best wide receivers out there basically don't hit a top 36 about half the time. So one good, one bad. I, I think we've He's looked. Good I don't know. Twenty fifth is where he finished in week one. Well, that's I, not the expectations that we had for him. A hundred yards by halftime. He sure. looked good on the field, and and then you you add in this matchup and the the high over under and the expect the expectation that both teams are going to need to be able to throw the ball. I, I I like Hollywood. Haven't really seen big games from either quarterback yet this year. I mean, Lamar Jackson, his numbers have not been worthy right. of his draft capital, nor has Patrick Mahomes. It's almost like you should draft late. Yeah. Get good value on Kyler and Josh Allen. Or yeah. booty scooting Cam Newton. Uh, Foot Clan game day alerts at jointhefoot.com. Sunday live. Mike will be live uh, on our socials. It's time to prop it. Prop it like it's hot. Presented by Monkey Knife Fight. All right, it's time for our favorite week three props over at Monkey Knife Fight. You can go to ballerspicks.com, use the code BALLERS, you get a 100% deposit match. And we've each each selected a uh, a prop from this upcoming week that we are making a decision on. Mm -hmm. I love my prop. I'm going right, to be honest with you. So far, I'm two for two on these weeks, um, but I, I love this one more than I've liked any of the other. I, Jonathan Taylor right now is listed at 83 and a half rushing yards. I am taking more than that. I believe he will have more than that. He, If you didn't know, 83. he played. Yeah, he plays uh, against the Jets. Yeah. So he had over 100 last 11 week. 11 and a half point favorites. So, uh, you know, he had, he had over 100 already, um, and it's the Jets. Uh, this is now his backfield and they're favored, but it is the Jets that he's playing against. Ah. Um, and so, <laughs> you know, our our premium projections, we, we actually stat out every single player based on how they score their fantasy points, where they should rank at the end of the week. And our premium projections have Jonathan Taylor Thomas down for 125 rushing yards as kind of that. So when I see 83 and a half and I see the Jets, I think that, well, he gets Who to play the Jets. are they playing again? Well, the Jets. Ah. And so, you know, I'll put it this way. The Jets have given up 280 rushing yards in two games. And it's the yeah. Jets. So I'm taking more I'll put it on this Jonathan way. Here's Taylor. a stat. I'll put it this way. <laughs> I like playing against the Jets. Yeah. Okay. I, that seems like a smash. And I have Travis Kelsey. The, the Monday night matchup, I'm getting in on it. Highlight the prime time. Get a little bit more fun on Monday. Travis Kelsey, six and a half receptions. I am taking the more. Uh, week one, he had six, so he would not have hit it. Nine receptions in week two. And if you look at what the Ravens, where they've actually given up some fantasy points, top 10 weeks to fantasy tight ends both weeks. And to me, that translates to Travis Kelsey hitting seven or more yeah, receptions. Yeah, I love this. Now, you were talking about the Jets, right? Yes. You know who I like to talk about? I like to talk about the Vikings. Oh, sure. When you play These the Vikings. Are, there's a lot of good uh, teams to target. My prop this week, I'm going to take Derrick Henry more than 95.5 rushing that's, that's a lot. yards. All but one of Derrick Henry's over over 100-yard games last year came with Ryan Tannehill, and he did it more than half the time with Ryan Tannehill. He's facing the Vikings this week. The Vikings have given up 139 and 141 rushing yards. They just lost Anthony Barr. And that's the, their first two games. And you've seen the carry count for Derrick Henry be right where you expect it, 31 and 25. He hasn't transformed yet, though. Into Derrick Yeti? And he's not the Yeti. No, but it, it, he has had one game already over this benchmark, and I think it's going to happen this week. 95 and a half yards. Yeah, probably. I'm taking the more. And a reminder to check out Monkey Knife Fight. Tons of these more or less uh, player prop games. Ballerspicks.com. Use the code BALLERS. You get a 100 percent deposit match up to fifty dollars mm -hmm. that's ballers Play with us ball, ballers picks <laughs> what was that, that kind of disturbing on every <laughs> level
I just like when the Foot Clan is getting uh, in on these games. It's all fun. Right. All right. Yeah, ballerspicks.com for that. One injury update. Julio Jones, game time decision on <sighs> Sunday. Oh, man. If oh, Julio's goodness. active, you play him. That is my policy. I'm not going to sit him. He did not come off the field due to injury this past week. He dropped the touchdown pass. He came off the and field and happy. stretched, and they got back on the field. Julio has played through injury so many times before and usually been fine. All right, that'll do it for today's show. Good luck this week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait for that Monday night game, too. Unbelievable. See you on Sunday, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.